If we lose freedom here, there's no place to escape to. This is the last stand on Earth. Whether we believe in our capacity for self-government or whether we abandon the American Revolution and confess that a little intellectual elite in a far distant capital can plan our lives for us better than we can plan them ourselves. A government can't control the economy without controlling people. And they know when a government sets out to do that, it must use force and coercion to achieve its purpose. Well, I think it's time we ask ourselves if we still know the freedoms that were intended for us by the founding fathers. Ladies and gentlemen, keep those words of Ronald Reagan embedded in your mind, because that's exactly what our centralized government has been doing to us for a long, long time, a little bit at a time. Using that force and coercion to control we, the people of the United States of America. This is exactly why the pe we, the people, can no longer afford to fight each other as Democrats or Republicans. This is not the war we, the people, need to fight. The war we need to fight is between conservatives and progressives. You see, the progressives have infected both parties. Don't take my word. Listen to our Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, which was appointed by our progressive president, Barack Obama, the president that said he is going to fundamentally change our country. And she was also approved by his progressive Congress. Here she is. I consider myself a proud, modern, American progressive, and I think that's the kind of uh, philosophy and practice that we need to bring back to American politics. So you wouldn't use the word liberal, you'd say progressive. <laughs> Senator Gravel? How about that third person in line to be your president? Nancy Pelosi, that looks at the we the people as astral turf. Now if you're going along with the progressive agenda thinking that your progressive government is going to give you everything you want for nothing in return, then don't bother signing up for the grassroots umbrella membership because our members are well educated and well organized and you'll just make a fool of yourself. The conservative Democrats and Republicans can win this battle without you. We have the organizational technology and organization to win this battle against the progressives now and to make sure we the people will keep winning in the generations to come. But we can't do it alone. We need the same kind of commitment from each and every one of you. Now the choice is yours. Do you want to leave your children a nation without freedom? Or do you want to leave them a, a nation that once was and still can be the greatest nation on earth? The choice is yours. Dear President Obama, we, the people, have stated resolutely we reject your vision for our country. You claim you have not heard us. We, the people, have assembled across America resisting your efforts to subvert our Constitution and undermine our liberty. You claim you have not seen us. Since you have not acknowledged our message, let us here present it once more. For if, as President Wilson said, a leader's ear must ring with the voices of the people, the time has come. Our greatest treasure is freedom, the absence of restraints on our ability to think and to act. The corollary of freedom is individual responsibility. We believe in the power of the individual. A few years ago, President Bush said, History moves toward freedom because the desire for freedom is written in every human heart. Let us add that we will preserve it only as long as devotion to freedom is expressed in the heart of our actions. 
When President Lincoln dedicated Gettysburg National Cemetery, he declared, it is for us, the living, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus so nobly advanced. That unfinished cause for which our soldiers willingly go to battle and for which so many have given their lives is a free United States of America. It has been nearly 150 years and the work President Lincoln spoke of is not finished. In fact, that work will never be finished. Freedom is the capacity for self-determination. It is not an entity, but a condition, and conditions change. Freedom can expand, yet so can it contract. You promised change when you took office, Mr. President, but subjugation is not change we wanted or will accept. You have expanded government, violated our Constitution, confounded laws, seized private industry, destroyed jobs, perverted our economy, curtailed free speech, corrupted our currency, weakened our national security, and endangered our sovereignty. By compromising our nation's cultural, legal, and economic institutions, you are ensuring that our children will never achieve the same quality of life as we enjoy today. Through generational theft, you are robbing the unborn of opportunity. This is not acceptable, not in America. We did not become a strong nation through hope, but rather through self-reliance. No one better understands the relationship between individual achievement, dignity, and strength than our armed forces. Through every war, our soldiers have held this nation's destiny in their hands. They have not failed us. They cherish freedom enough that they are willing to die for it. Our duty to them and to ourselves is to treasure freedom enough to live up to it. We accept the challenge, Mr. President. That is why we are assembling across the land to deliver our message to you as often and in every way we can. Dismiss us at your political peril. Our great nation is a republic. We will not accept tyranny under any guise. Your policy to redistribute the fruits of our labor is statism and will not be tolerated. By our honor, Mr. President, we vow forever to resist coercive government in America. Patriots will not stand silent as you attempt to dismantle the greatest nation on earth. We, the people, will defend our liberty we will protect our beloved country, and America's exceptionalism will prevail. God bless the United States of America. Sincerely, we the people.